Hi guys, my name is Carlos from Epson. I'm here to talk about the Epson Laser Projection TV. I'm sure you've read about it or you've heard about it. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process it takes to get it installed. So how long does it take to actually install the Epson Laser Projection TV? I would encourage you to enjoy the installation. It takes about three to four hours. And I would also encourage you to have somebody to help you, not because it's complicated, but because the size of the screen would probably be better suited if you have somebody to help you mount it on the wall. The Epson Laser Projection TV supports the latest AV standards. So if you want a 4K, 60 Hertz HDR picture, make sure that everything you're connecting to it also supports those standards. AVR systems, soundbars, and even cables. You might be wondering what tools you need to have handy to install the Epson Laser Projection TV. First, a level, an electric drill, tape measure, and a stud finder. Another thing to consider is the distance that the projector sits from the wall. That depends on the size of the screen you order, 100 inches or 120. You can find those measurements in our website, but this is basically how a 100 inches setup will look like. So I'm putting one corner together. So I'm gonna slide this L bracket inside the frame. Holes matching with the holes, in the holes in the frame. And then you can start attaching the screws without fully tightening them. And again, don't fully tighten so that you have some wiggle room to adjust later. So now that the all four sides are screwed in, I can fully tighten, making sure that the corner is like very, very straight. So now let's get our hands into the screen material. We're gonna keep it protected from your hands for now, but then at a certain point you have to use the provided white gloves to continue with the installation. It's, it's gotta be clean, but it comes with a protective material that protects the actual screen. So I'm gonna start unrolling it. The one important thing is that the screen material is actually facing down. What you're seeing here is the back of the screen. There's no problem touching it, and that's the way you wanna keep it. Never try to turn it upside down because the material will probably break. Uh, it's not a very good thing to try to lift it. So you just leave it that way and then you put the frame on top of it and just start working with the springs. We're now gonna put the frame on top of the screen material. Here, the only thing to pay attention to is that the screws need to be facing upwards. And then you center the frame on the screen material and we're gonna start working on the springs, attaching the springs to these holes on the inner edge of the frame. You will find a box of springs that will basically keep the tension on the screen material. So I'm gonna attach this spring to these holes on the screen. As you can see, the back of it is shiny black. The actual screen material is gray. You don't need to use the gloves at this point because you're not touching the front of the screen. So I'm gonna attach one spring here to the screen material and then I'm gonna use this tool to extend it and attach it to the inner side of the frame. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and as you can see, I'm using one on each side only and not going all the way to four because I wanna balance it out. I wanna do the same thing in the other four corners so that the screen remains in the center piece of the frame. So now I'm gonna to move to the exact opposite corner and do the same thing. Attach a spring to the screen material, attach it to the inner side of the frame using the tool. This is to make sure that screen remains centered to the frame. To continue with the process, go to one corner and then to the next one, attaching one spring at a time to keep the tension on the screen. Then when you're finished with the springs, you can go with the final part of the screen assembly, which is attaching the outer frame, those black metal pieces that go on each of the four sides and that you have to screw on each of the four corners. As you can see, the uh, brackets are already installed. What I did was that I used the stud finder to find those studs. 
closer to where the center of the room or the center of the screen is going to be located and then just install them. Uh, the distance, and I have them leveled, the distance between them is about 50 inches. You can give or take. That depends on where the starts are located in your, in your, in your room. And uh, you're going to have some flexibility to move the, the screen sideways to adjust for the center of the projected picture or the room environment. Okay, so this is the most critical part of the installation. You see the two brackets installed, but the height of them is determined by the height of the projector. You can go to our website and check the specific measurements for each of the different sizes of screen. So far, we haven't touched the front side of the screen material, which is facing downwards now. So uh, this is the right time to get your gloves on, the white gloves that come in the box. Get some help because you're gonna be lifting the screen from the ground and you wanna make sure that you're not touching the screen with your hands that have some oil and other type of dirt that could damage the screen. So we're gonna lift the screen now. The screen has a side. So, so far we haven't talked about that, but there is a side, so we're gonna hang it so that the label that is on the back where the bottom says bottom, you keep that in the bottom, and then you're gonna hang the screen from the brackets inside the rails of the inner frame. The inner frame, as we showed in the video, have an opening like a bay, and that's where you hang the screen from. Okay, so we're down to the last part of the installation. I'm gonna show you how to access some controls on the back of the projector. I'll take out this cover. It's magnetic, so it's pretty simple. You'll find some buttons here, so we'll go to the menu, go to settings, and installation guide. This will display a pattern that will allow you to uh, align the picture with the screen. So there is some movement that you can do on the screen itself because of how, the, how it's hanged from the wall. So you can move it sideways a little bit, but let's try to fix it just with moving the projector. So first I'm gonna try to aim at the sides and the bottom, make sure they're straight. And then I'm gonna use the two feet adjusters on the side, twisting them to correct the keystoning. You can also level the projector, this should help too. And then let me just twist the knobs. I'm moving it to the left a little bit. And I think that's pretty much squared. You do have some uh, digital tools to compensate for the overspraying so that it matches perfectly the picture, but you can also start, and you should start by playing with the physical elements of the projector to match the screen. And you want to make sure also that you adjusted the focus correspondingly so that the picture is as sharp as it possibly can. That'll change a little bit the size of the projector picture. So you want to make sure it's, it's, it's focused before you finalize your adjustments. Before I show you some content, I just want to show you some quick last tip. Uh, if you get closer, and hopefully this is not the case, but you might see a little bit of overspray on the bezel. So there's a way to get rid of it. I'm gonna to go to the projector menu, and then settings, and then hit to the blanking feature. This will basically project a black line instead of content uh, in each of the sides. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom, and I'm gonna start increasing that. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video, but basically the black is going up, but that allows you to correct any overspray on the frame. So here we have it perfectly straight, and the same thing would apply and I would advise to try to use, again, the physical corrections first, but if you need to, you can go to quick corners and make adjustments if you're not hitting the right corners of the screen. So I'm gonna just show you here the effect of it. I'm gonna do the top left corner. I'm gonna bring it down, and you can see how the image corrects itself in case you're not hitting the exact corners of the screen. So I'm gonna bring it back to the original setting. and you're done with installation. So now I can show you some content. This is a 4K 60 Hertz file. The lights are on and look how bright the picture looks. The contrast, the detail, the brightness, and it just looks amazing.